The transatlantic slave trade was a tragic period in history where millions of African lives were lost and dehumanization and suffering were rampant. African men, women and children were enslaved, captured and sold to European slave traders during this time. But are you aware of some of the most monstrous punishments given to female slaves which made them a walking corpse? To comprehend the misery and pain experienced by African women in slavery, let's examine the horrific forms of punishment they received. Sadly, tying people up with chains and shackles is the least terrible punishment to begin with. During the transatlantic slave trade, chains and shackles were a common form of confinement and control used on African slaves. These tools were made to limit the mobility and movement of the enslaved people, reaffirming their status as property and the hierarchical nature of slavery. People who were enslaved frequently had to deal with the terrible realities of being chained and shackled. They were physically restrained by using iron or metal restraints like neck collars, ankle shackles, and handcuffs. The slaves' limbs would be closely tied, making it difficult for them to walk, run, or even carry out simple duties. The use of shackles and chains was a deliberate dehumanizing and subjugating act. Slaves were frequently confined in permanent bonds, having their freedom of movement severely restricted for extended periods of time. They were dehumanized, robbed of their individuality, and reduced to being nothing more than property instead of being treated as things. Additionally, the usage of shackles and chains prevented any acts of resistance and escape. Many enslaved women were maintained in a cycle of bondage because they feared punishment or retaliation for trying to escape. Beating was another harsh penalty. No, it wasn't just a straightforward pounding. It was far worse than that. It entailed applying physical force to inflict harm, injury, and submission, frequently using fists, sticks, or other such objects. Constant blows would be delivered to the enslaved women, frequently to exposed body parts such as the face, abdomen, back, or limbs. To cause the most suffering and harm, they often utilized their fists, whips, sticks, or other tools. These beatings had significant physical repercussions. People who were enslaved experienced internal traumas, broken bones, bruises, and physical disabilities that persisted. In other instances, beatings resulted in fatalities or even lasting disability. The beatings were administered by slave owners, overseers, or other powerful people as a form of control, discipline, or punishment. The beatings ranged in severity from light blows to severe and protracted assaults. The next terrible punishment will make you shudder. Hold on, because there will be many more, as this is really nothing. A harsh and dehumanizing technique used during the transatlantic slave trade was known as branding. It involves the use of hot irons to either punish certain acts or mark enslaved people as the property of their owners. An iron rod or branding iron was often heated until it was red hot during the branding procedure. The hot iron would be placed on the skin of the enslaved person while they were held down or bound, producing a lasting mark or scar. These marks were frequently applied on the body's exposed regions, such as the face, chest, or forearm, as a clear indication of ownership and control. Did you know that the main purposes of branding were to distinguish enslaved people and prevent theft or possible escape? The markings served as a permanent form of identification, making it simpler for slave dealers or owners to assert possession and separate their property from other people's property. A branded person may be more easily identified and brought back to their master, serving as a means of discouraging enslaved people from escaping. Branding was employed as a form of punishment as well as identification. To exercise control and induce fear, enslaved people who were judged to be rebellious, disobedient, or a threat to the slavery system could be branded. Both when the hot iron was applied and during the later healing process, branding caused great pain. Moving on to the fourth punishment, whipping. One of the most frequent punishments and types of discipline meted out to African slaves during the transatlantic slave trade was whipping. It was a cruel and dehumanizing tactic used to establish dominance, instill fear, and crush the spirit of the people who were being held as slaves. Whippings were not only administered in rare instances, but also frequently in the daily lives of slaves. The act of being whipped was extremely humiliating and painful for the slaves. Their backs would be exposed and vulnerable because they would be stripped and tied to a post, tree, or other items. The women enforcing the punishment would violently swing the whip, repeatedly striking the enslaved person's exposed skin. The whip's lashes would pierce the skin, leaving behind painful welts and deep wounds. The amount of lashes varied according to the seriousness of the offense or the punisher's whim. A few to several dozen or even more lashes 
may be used during a whipping. The physical and psychological trauma sustained were constantly brought to mind by the wounds these beatings left behind. The punishment served a greater purpose than just inflicting suffering. Whippings were intended to degrade and humiliate the slaves, robbing them of their humanity and reaffirming their status as property. The psychological suffering endured by the enslaved people was further exacerbated by the public aspect of many whippings, which included a component of public shame. During the transatlantic slave trade, collars and stocks were further devices used to bind and humiliate African slaves. These tools were designed to keep slaves immobile and expose them to public mockery, thereby solidifying their enslavement and the brutal power dynamics of slavery. The enslaved person's head, hands, or feet were held in place by apertures in the wooden stocks. Once confined to the stocks, the slave's range of motion was severely constrained, leaving them helpless and vulnerable to the observant eyes of passers-by. Not only was this type of imprisonment physically demanding, but it was also emotionally and psychologically humiliating. As you can see here, collars were metal constraints placed around the slaves' necks. These collars, which were frequently bulky, were meant to clearly identify the enslaved individual as property. They served as an emblem of ownership, reducing people to nothing more than goods and serving as a continual reminder of their inferior status. Word plays of confinement and control were used in the use of stocks and collars. They embodied the idea that slaves were stalked or imprisoned, cut off from agency and freedom. Similar to this, collaring slaves reduced them to the status of animals, emphasizing their dehumanization and loss of human rights. Additionally, these tools were employed as a means of degrading and humiliating people in public. People who were enslaved and wearing stocks or collars were the target of taunts, insults, and even physical abuse from bystanders. This public display affirmed the dominance of the enslavers and continued the dehumanization of the captives, strengthening the social hierarchy of slavery. The physical and psychological limitations imposed on African slaves were symbolized by the stocks and collars, which were vivid representations of the terrible system of slavery. They served as a symbol of the extent that slave owners and overseers would go to in order to keep their power and degrade individuals they viewed as their property. We have reached the final punishment, which is the most difficult and agonizing for women overall. A penalty or crime really that leaves them broken, damaged, and convinces them of a fate worse than a nightmare. Yes, you guessed it correctly. Rape served as this penalty. African female slaves cruelly endured sexual abuse, including rape, at the hands of their owners, overseers, and other people in positions of authority during the dark era of the transatlantic slave trade. The institution of slavery had this horrible kind of abuse ingrained in it, and it was sustained by a toxic mix of racial discrimination, gender inequality, and blatant contempt for the humanity of those who were held as slaves. Objects without agency or autonomy, enslaved women were perceived as existing only for the enjoyment and profit of their captors. Their bodies were considered as commodities to be violated at will, and they were denied the opportunity to give or withdraw consent. Sexual abuse was a tactic used by slave owners and overseers to exert domination over these helpless women and further the dehumanizing effects of slavery. Slave women from Africa who were raped endured unimaginable suffering. They were subjected to severe physical and mental suffering while losing their sense of worth, dignity, and bodily autonomy. Such sexual assault has far-reaching effects, leaving behind emotional scars that would last a lifetime, broken self-esteem, and severe psychiatric discomfort. The vulnerability of African female slaves was made worse by the junction of race and gender. They were excluded and silenced by the interlocking forces of racism and sexism, and they experienced the double oppression of being both women and slaves. Their intersectionality made them vulnerable to certain types of exploitation, where sexual assault was used as a tactic of racial dominance as well as a control mechanism. It was a time when women were burdened with unfathomable suffering, casting a ghastly shadow over them. Let's work to make sure that such a time never occurs again, and that all women are safeguarded, valued, and spared from such atrocities. Please share your thoughts in the comments below.